The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed is the children of the, king, of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will be throw, then he will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be nail, wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteousness will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Jesus retreats into the house. He dismisses the crowd, and he goes into a type of isolation with the disciples. And here is the difference between the crowd, who are good followers of Jesus, but then you have the disciples, who want to be more inserted. They want to know more, and so they allow themselves to be isolated with Jesus in the house. It's symbolically this place of solitude where the interior life of the person is nurtured, the interior life of the soul, that little hideaway away from the crowd where your earbuds are removed and the noise is turned off, and you're in the inner room that St. Matthew would talk about earlier in chapter 6, where you pray to the Father. This is the disciple who is dedicated to prayer. It's the disciple a, a, approaching Jesus on a more intimate level, not just to hear him, but have a conversation with him. What you see in the gospel, I think, is the bullet points of the teaching he gives on the sower. I'm sure there was much bigger explanation for that, and that's what the disciples, I trust, received. And it's indicative of our need not only to look at the scriptures and read them, but to, to be able to sit with them in solitude and in isolation, and pray over them, and let the Holy Spirit speak to us, and have a conversation with Jesus about these things, a two-way conversation. To think about Scripture is one thing, but, then to, and, but thinking about Him is more or less a one-way conversation with yourself. But when we sit and pray and actually dialogue and talk to Jesus, some people prefer to do that in a way, by way of a journal. Today is the Feast of St. Ignatius, and a, a coin word for St. Ignatius would be to have a colloquy, a literal conversation. You picture Jesus sitting in the chair next to you, and you start talking to him and picture his answer to you. And some people take notes and write this stuff down. To have that kind of isolation and conversational solitude, it requires work. 
The Catechism is so serious about this that in its section on prayer, um, Article 2 in the section on prayer is titled, The Battle of Prayer. If you're married, you have to fight for your time with your spouse, don't you? Sometimes to have a conversation. You can be so busy. And it's even worse if you, if you think you're having it bad and fighting for time with your spouse or someone you really care about, it's even worse trying to find the time for Jesus. You might get more pressure from your wife. That was a little joke. In this time of prayer where this battle takes place to quiet ourselves down and to have this conversation with Jesus in this battle for prayer, the soil is tilled and churned and watered with vigor. And the seed roots and sprouts. And this is all possible because of sitting yourself down and being quiet. And even if prayer is just simply quiet, the a stillness and allowing for the soul to be at peace allows that stillness for the Holy Spirit to enter and supply knowledge and wisdom and understanding that far surpasses the intellectual pursuits of the mind. The fruit is this growing understanding of Scripture and a deepening in the understanding of the mysteries of our faith that are not necessarily taught to someone, but caught in the whirlwind of the Holy Spirit imbuing our souls. It's in prayer that then the Eucharist becomes not something I know as a scientific fact or a physical thing, but it's what St. Paul describes as the sure thing to be hoped for and the certainty of what can't be seen. On October 13th, here in the parish, we will launch our Ignatius study, a 30-week retreat for the hardy, a 30-week retreat to pray, to invest an hour a day for 30 weeks to pray and use the spirituality of St. Ignatius to explore life in the spirit. There's information about that on our webpage if you want to look at that. And you can even sign up online. It is, you, you must be dedicated to praying an hour a day for 30 weeks. You will never be the same. And the group will meet on Saturday mornings beginning October 13th from 8 to about 9.30. No more than that. And then at your hour every day after that. You're most welcome to learn about the mystery of prayer through St. Ignatius. Regina Cieli, letter